Uh, anyone want to register as a speaker? Yep, so. Okay. <coughs> All right. Good morning. Or, wait, what morning? Is this morning or afternoon? No. Afternoon. Afternoon. Oh my God! I must still be jet lagged. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to talk a little bit about my particular area of specialty: editing on South. East or East Asian topics on the English Wikipedia. If we see the English Wikipedia, most of the articles are going to be about topics in the Anglosphere, in English speaking areas. We're going to see a very long article on Justin Bieber or Lady Gaga, and pretty much nothing about some very popular Chinese singers. Um, for example, the article on, she might be too old now, but Fai Ye Wong, her article is terrible until now. Or in Indonesia, there's a ton of singers who don't have any articles whatsoever. And as a result, Wikipedia becomes unbalanced. As Jimbo was saying earlier, the slogan has been the sum of all human knowledge, not the sum of all English-speaking people's human knowledge. So we have to try and focus some effort at least in covering this area. Now, there are some challenges which are specific to the areas. First of all, it's difficult to find sources. First of all, because only certain topics receive extensive English language coverage. If we're to talk about Indonesia, I could probably find a whole lot on the National Revolution or on some major historical events. But if I'm to talk about a film director, I'm not going to find very much. Or even some specific events in history. Right? And sometimes very little is online because many East and Southeast Asian nations have not been able to put their source, their newspapers and whatnot online. For English sources, we can get some pretty decent sources online, even for stuff that's 50 years old, but very, very few East or Southeast Asian nations have done such archiving, right? Now, images are also more off difficult to access because these communities might not have the same mindset. For the Indonesian community, for example, their Wikipedia allows fair use, which means they can use non-free images for basically anything a living person, an event, a book cover, anything, they can use it very freely. And so there is no incentive to take pictures. All right. And in many cases, Wikimedia Commons, the free media repository, is empty. I talked about the Nyai, so the concubines of the Dutch and Chinese uh, businessmen and owners and whatnot in the Indies, no pictures whatsoever. And finally, language barriers. Many native speakers of a particular language have trouble writing in English. So they might know about something, they might really be into it, but they write so poorly that it can't be cleaned up, it can't be saved, or it ends up deleted. Now, I'm going to maybe toot my own horn a little bit here and show an example. So here we have a very important individual in Indonesian history, the first native Indonesian bishop. So for Indonesian Catholics, he is a very important figure. This is what the article looked like when it was created, very short. And the detail, the information used was from what little was available in English sources. Now, and I'm going to show you the full article later. It has been developed quite a bit better. Okay, we can see um, much more information about this individual, which is similar to the coverage which we would see of someone in the West if somebody dedicates enough time to it. Now, this, as I said, is Alberta Subia Pranata, the first Indonesian archbishop. Now, in this change from the old article to the article you see now, 
almost all of the sources had to be Indonesian. If we were to focus only on English sources, we could not get anywhere near as much information as we needed. Images had to be collected from public domain sources or photograph, or I had to photograph them myself because there had not been any effort to do so before. And the any language issues, perhaps some wonky translations or something, it can be edited out during reviews. So from this, I've, I'm, I have a couple suggestions on how to solve this ish, these issues, okay? So individual editors, first of all, can remember Individual editors can remember that they are not only limited to using English sources, but they can use sources from any which language as long as it is reliable. If we are to talk about a Hong Kong singer, for example, we can use Cantonese sources. That's not an issue as long as it is reliable. Now, for people who do not speak the local language, they can work with a native speaker of that language as appropriate. All right, and naturally an individual editor is going to have to work a bit harder to dig up this information if they have an interest and have access. For the Sugya Pranata article, I had to drive three hours to another city to collect pictures because there was nobody who was willing to do it, even if we worked together. And for people who have difficulty speaking English, or writing in English, it would ha there has to be some work with the community, with the English Wikipedia community, to polish that language, to make it accessible and academic. All right. Now, in the long term, I'd like to see interchapter collaboration. I have seen it done on smaller wikis. The French. Wikimedia worked together with Wikimedia Indonesia to promote articles about France on the Japanese Wikipedia. Now, in that case, the Japanese Wikipedia focused naturally on topics related to the Japanese and American popular culture. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but fun works like this, even though the English Wikipedia is the largest, there still has to be some effort dedicated towards making these articles possible because it's honestly a lot easier for people, for most of the English Wikipedia's editors to write about Anglophone subjects. All right. Now, another way is, another thing I'd like to see done is the socialization of Wikipedia knowing so basically, part of our verifiability policy, which allows the use of non-English sources, a lot of editors seem to be under the impression that we cannot use non-English sources when, in fact, that's sometimes the only referencing possible for a subject. All right, now, uh, for a bit of an illustration, I'd like to point to the article we looked at earlier, okay? So we have some some images, right? Okay, lead section. And as you can see, some of these had to be taken at the location to tie in the locations where no other images were available. And if we look at the referencing, we can see that Many of them had to be in the Indonesian language because English language sources of the detail required were not available. And one thing which can be quite important when talking about such subjects is showing the significance in context, which might not be known to the general readership. So for example, when discussing a school which this individual attended, 
we have to say why it was important. If we say Yale, most of our readers will understand. But if we say Xavier's College, it's not going to be understood very well by people outside a very specific target audience. So we have to work a bit harder on that. All right. Uh, I think that's it for my short presentation. Uh, is there anything that's not clear over there? Ah, yes. When you say you use Indonesian uh, resources, do you mean they are in English or you translate Indonesian them? language resources. Um, I live and study in Indonesia, so... And the language is Indonesian. Right. You translate into English, yeah? I translate the information, but I use my own wording, right? Because, as I was saying earlier, sometimes there aren't any sources in English. Um, if we are to look at some of the notable places in any Southeast Asian country, I think, or East Asian country, there's going to be some information that's never been put into English before, especially some of the lesser known topics. Uh, any other questions or? Or comments, maybe? I have one question. Sure. If you were to do this and don't speak Indonesian, how well can you, how well do people generally tend to manage these things like Google Translate and so okay. on? Um, actually, I can answer that with my own experience because my Dutch is pretty much as good as my Swahili, uh -huh. so. Uh, but for writing about subjects with Dutch language sources, mm -hmm. I've had to, on occasion, type it out in Google Translate or use Google Translate to find it out. And we can usually get the general gist right. of what the subject is saying. Now, for specific information, it's preferable to work directly with a native speaker of that language. Right. So for Dutch, I usually contact uh, an English language Wikipedia editor who is a native speaker of Dutch. And he's usually very willing to check and if, for example, in one case I had put sick when the word was not as Google Translate had it, he was able to say in that time frame that was correct, something which I would not have been able to catch on my own. So some individual work is possible, but collaboration is still at least very much find out if it's a good source for what you want to do, with, I suppose. Um, Generally, yes, and you can usually tell that from the, uh, what would you call it, the information on the publication page, so you could see who published it and whatnot, but that would require quite a bit of cross-checking afterwards, like, right. is whatever, is Bintang a reliable publisher or not? Fair enough. Yes. Another quick question from... Uh, I'm just translating. He, he uh, writes in Kazakh language, which is Central Asian language, and a uh, very limited number of articles you have on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, so he basically translates from Russian into Kazakh. Well, when you write references, should you uh, translate the reference into the language that you All are right. writing in, and just leave the link in English, uh, in Russian? OK. Um, I don't know what templates they use in the Kazakh Wikipedia, but I believe you still use a form of site web, site news, or something like that. Do they still use something like that? Templates. Because you can use what we call, what in the English Wikipedia is trans title, which allows you to provide both the original title of the work and a translation of its title, not the entire work naturally, because that would be a copyright violation, but the title. So here, in Sukhya Pranata, we can see a news article, Menghormati Palawan di bawah kai guyuran hujan. So that's the Indonesian title. And next to it, in square brackets, the template provides 
an English translation so that the readers can understand roughly what the subject is about, and then they can verify it by clicking on the link. So it pops up, and it still is in Indonesian. Um, maybe if we look at the code, it will be more easy to access. The code. Would you? Okay, so here, for example, the templates allow you to provide the title in translation, and it formats it automatically on the English Wikipedia. In Kazakh, it might be possible to apply it if they don't have it already. Now, some people, not all of them, but some people also provide a link to the Google translation of the website, if it's a website. I don't do that because I think it's a copyright violation, but it's possible. All right. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, for beginners? Uh, to write a title, uh, it's very um, maybe um, not easy because uh, you must uh, write the program programming. Yes. Uh, okay. So and very basic. Yes. Okay. And do you, uh, maybe change it for easier? Maybe. That's so difficult. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Right now they are applying some software mm -hmm. called Visual Editor. So you know Microsoft Word, Open Office, and whatnot, right? Yeah. So you can use, you will be able to use Wikipedia almost as if it was Microsoft Word. You would be able to format it much more easily than to look at the code. Now, right now, it's still, you can use it, but it's still a little buggy. So it's difficult if you do not have a strong connection because I'm usually on a very slow connection, I don't use it. But it's possible, and it will be even better in the near future. By the way, I just checked, and it looks like Site News is not actually on Kazakh, but it's on the Russian Wikipedia as Site All News, right. so it can be brought over. Yeah, so for the templates, you can translate them from the Russian Wikipedia if you need to. or provide it manually, of course. Any other comments or questions, or should we let Adam have his turn? Okay, thank you very much, Chris. All right, thank you.